Welcome, Kinga, to the Dharma Journey podcast. So happy to have you on. Kinga is a beautiful friend of mine, and we've been living in Bali together for the last six months, or well, longer actually, but last six months together. Uh, Kinga is actually a brand strategist and business coach, and she's been helping me on my Dharma journey and really helping each other. So I'm super excited to have you on because you've been so, you know, helpful in my life and growing my business to a, a point where it is now and, you know, and other people's too. And I really can't wait to share with the listeners what you do and, you know, your journey, your Dharma journey and how we met in Bali and how it's kind of unfolded since then. So yeah, like uh, Kinga and I met at a coffee shop, our favorite coffee shop called BGS in Bali. So you need to go if you ever can get out of your home country and fly to Bali. And we met and, you know, we connected straight away, both from England, both very extroverted characters. And literally like when we met, we were, I don't know, we kind of had that, that little spark and Kinga was like, we both kind of, weirdly enough had a common ground on talking about parasites and that's kind of how our how our journey unfolded and we were talking about gut health and digestion and king is living in bali for a couple of months and was having some digestive issues having having some stuff going on so that's where she reached out to me and and we started working together and did a, a program together and yeah and that kind of unfolded into then her helping me with my business because she starts to understand it on such a deep level she was like hang on a minute i think i can help you here um you know one person doing all of this work is is quite hard so please please let me help you and and the last couple of months she's been yeah growing my business and helping me on all the things that i'm not so good at so yeah i'd love to welcome you on kinga and yeah my question to you at the start is you know how what's been happening the last you know six months you've been in a bit of a transition yourself and yeah just kind of guide us through what you've been going through and and how you've got to this moment right now thanks Briar, and hi everyone i'm so excited to actually do this podcast because Briar and i have been talking about it for months um also i love the tamed version of um how we met um it was more of you know i overheard Briar talking about poo and i just i I needed to get to know her and that's how our friendship started. <laughs> um, it's been a quite a journey. You're right. I've definitely been through a, a transitional period of my life and I'm sure we'll kind of uncover the, the whole background of it as we go through this podcast. But um, the last six months have really been about um, finding my Dharma journey. So really clarifying what my purpose is and how do I, how do I serve serve that purpose and how do I live in alignment um I have been on a crazy spiritual journey but crazy journey in my life as I'm sure everyone else has um but I feel that I have finally gotten to the point where I really understand um how I want to show up as an individual and what what do I want for my life and who do I want to be for my friends for my family so that's that's what I've been kind of focusing on in the last six months I've currently left Bali so I'm actually sat in cold freeze in England it is sunny though which is which is a plus um I left Bali because I needed to come back and put myself in the same environment that um that I was in before I left when I wasn't very aligned and when I was basically broken to see to see how I can show up in you know in the in the environment that kept me sick which you know some people say you can't change if you stay in the environment that makes you sick so I'm back I'm rediscovering relearning and it's been a journey so far <laughs> I know you've you've literally been on such a same as me like so when I first got to Bali I was in the same position you were like Bali kind of gives us what we need and and it's also like i think we don't know why we come to bali but it subconsciously we come for finding our you know finding ourselves like really dissolving those layers that don't serve us anymore and i think that's the last six months has been really what you've been going through on your journey into you know more more love more wholeness more direction more alignment and 
yeah, what was like, you know, for you, what was like the catalyst moment? Like what made you like think I need to come to Bali. I need to break free from the, you know, the nine to five hustle of London life. That's such a good question. And I always think with, with the, there are so many different factors that play into, into your decision to actually quit. But I think kind of fast forward to, to when I decided to go, it was definitely because my job wasn't fulfilling anymore. Um, I was in a very serious relationship that um, I believe I only healed from when I arrived in Bali. Um, that broke my heart and shattered you know, me to pieces. And then I, um, I threw myself into my job. Um, because that's all I had. So it was the only way of me finding external validation and being made to feel worthy and good enough and being told that I was successful. So I put my heart and soul into a job that was no longer fulfilling or satisfying. Um, and I just felt like I was in a hamster wheel, constantly running and constantly wanting more validation, more approval, um, just the pats on the backs being told. And, you know, I sat with myself one after the last bank holiday weekend of 2019 i believe when i just had a few too many vendors and realized that it wasn't me and that's not who i wanted to be and i lost myself somewhere in it and um, i didn't want to leave my life like this anymore so i started to make small steps towards getting rid of everything that i owned and trust me, it was a lot. <laughs> and it was a gradual process. It wasn't kind of an overnight, I'm packing my bags and I'm going to Bali, but I had in my head that I was leaving. Um, and that, that was definitely the catalyst. But there were so many other contributing factors that obviously came to that. And needless to say, I used to make jokes of people who went to Bali. Like, I, I, I admit that. I openly thought it was absolutely hilarious that people would lose themselves and go and find themselves like Julia Roberts in Bali. I was the first person to, you know, be so skeptical about it. And here I am talking about my spiritual journey with you on a podcast. So what do I know? <laughs> we, li we literally had this vision, like we've been chatting for the last you know a couple of months since we've been growing together and we were like okay where do we want to take you know this dharma journey and I, I can imagine a lot of you can relate living in you know a country where you are especially right now in corona times where it's kind of a little bit limited i mean we're really fortunate in bali we have a lot of freedom still we have to wear masks occasionally but we have got that freedom so i know for a lot of people when they're in a you know a 9 to 5 job and they're maybe not living what they're really passionate about it can get a little bit confronting and you know you get that that little that feeling that that motivation that you want to do something else or do something that really I would say set your set your heart on fire. So for you, obviously, I remember we we were speaking about when you started working with me, and you were like, "This is really like something I'm so passionate about is working for conscious brands to help um, them build a, a, a brand that's in alignment with their values." And obviously, you were working for a com yoga company beforehand, and I think you you said that it was like once you started working for specific companies it's like you start to see the ins and outs of you know the business and for you you were like oh now you've started creating your your own uh, creative agency so you've obviously had a lot of knowledge from going from a corporate and then kind of breaking free from the corporate and now going into the unknown which is really scary into your dharma journey to break free from the nine to five hustle that confinement that a lot of people feel very stuck in because we need to pay the bills and sometimes it's a bit too much of a leap to to jump into straight away so how what kind of gave you that that motivation that shakti the power to you know jump into the the unknown i think it, you hit a nail on the head there when you say it's you know it's that statement of well we have to pay the bills and we have to live and it I'd be lying if I didn't say that I led a very unconscious life um, to a certain degree. I was in a very high paid job that made, meant that I had a very high quality of life. So I lived at a certain level of life that was very comfortable. And 
letting go of that that comfort of being able to travel whenever wherever eat whatever i want live my life the way i want it to was a scary thing and i think it's probably what keeps a lot of people being unhappy and being stuck in a job because they're not willing to give up um the level of life that they're leading but i i think it's a question that you need to pose to yourself is is it the level of life that's are you so comfortable with being uncomfortable that's the question right so for me it was it was that feeling of it doesn't matter what I have in my life because I had a lot. It doesn't matter how many private jets I get on. It doesn't matter how many times I go on holiday or how many people I meet or how many fancy dinners I eat because something within me doesn't feel right. And when I go to sleep, and I, I, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this will have that feeling now or have had it before. When you wake up in the morning, you you have an anxious feeling and you don't know what it is and you can't put your finger on it, but something just doesn't feel right. And I had that feeling for a very long time. I fell asleep anxious and I woke up anxious, but there was nothing really happening in my life. So I didn't really understand why that was happening, but it was there. And now I know looking back on it, it was a feeling that I wasn't living in my purpose. And it is a very interesting point that my mum made once we were having a conversation um how I struggled with my finances so I was earning this crazy money and I've saved money and I traveled but the money's kind of gone and I had a similar situation in Bali so I was working for a company which is unheard of in Bali to come to Bali and find a job straight away and then be earning good money you know that's a very difficult thing to achieve but I wasn't really keeping the money like the money was just being spent constantly and my mum said to me you know have you ever thought about the fact that maybe that money doesn't stick to you is because you don't believe you deserve it because you're not earning it in a conscious honest way and that to me was like wow you've really got it there because if if that's how I feel, then of course I'm not going to build, you know, a business out of it. Of course I'm not going to want to get rich or however you want to call it. Um, if I don't believe I deserve that money. So, you know, I've worked with people who are extremely wealthy, sickening wealthy. I've seen the way they spend money. I've spent their money for them and it was exciting and exhilarating. I loved the journey, but I realized that actually I'm more of a humanist and I'm a person who really cares about the planet, the world, the way we, you know, the way we interact with each other um, on a small and bigger level. And I just didn't want to be part of the system anymore. And yes, it sounds radical. And yes, it sounds like, oh, here we go, another Bali baby trying to, you know, to save the world. But ultimately, it just didn't align for me. I'm not saying it's wrong. It can align for other people. You know, your purpose might be to make money. Your purpose might be to be on the trading floor. Uh, but that just wasn't me and I've always been like that since since childhood but I kind of lost myself somewhere in it so I had to go back to my roots by meeting you <laughs> back to the roots yeah that that's it it's powerful because I think when we ha when we have that feeling of anxiety like when we you know we experience this sense of deep frustration or it's like this it's a creeping kind of feeling that over time gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And often what we do is we suppress it. I, I know I do. Um, speaking for myself and the clients that I've worked with is we suppress those feelings of anxiety through food, through alcohol, through numbing, sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever you, whatever your choice is. So I think for any of the listeners out there, like, you know, are you, feeling that there is that anxiousness inside of you that maybe is, is a, your soul you're, it's something inside of you that's wanting to break free from something or someone or you know a situation and I see a lot of right now like a lot of relationships at the moment going through this corona um, time and it's quite challenging for a lot of relationships I know my own relationship as well like we are going through a, a, a shift in humanity where I, I believe that it's we're awakening and things are happening for us and we're becoming more conscious and I think that's so powerful and you know a lot of ham households and relationships are finding it really ch challenging being in a close environment especially working from home like working being living with each other 24 7 that's you know insane how is it with your parents right now how are you how are you managing 
I know they're going to be listening to this. I have to tread carefully. <laughs> no, kidding. You, you know, there are two part. There are always two sides to every story. I'm super happy to be back because I'm extremely close to my parents and I'm extremely close to my family. I have a baby brother as well, so it's important for me to be around. But um, what I found really, really difficult, and I know we spoke about this, is maintaining your daily routine and your daily practice when you are in a Kind of in a completely different environment on other people's schedule i my schedule is so up in the air because i'm up early in the morning doing my morning practice then i'm jumping on calls with people from bali from like 7 a.m then i'm kind of free during the day then i'm busy again so it has been tricky and i've openly spoken to them about it so i'm actually moving back to london um this weekend i'm really excited about that but it's also been it's been an amazing learning learning curve for me and what I've taken out from it is actually it is possible to live a blissful peaceful life in Bali and have all of these techniques and um, ability to refrain yourself from reacting to be in the moment to be present to listen and not to project your own kind of triggers and insecurities and I've really been actively I, I made a promise to myself before arriving that I would actively try and do that whilst being at home with my two parents who obviously as you know I've had conflicts with as everyone does have conflicts with the parents over time and I feel like I've gotten to know them better for the last month that I've been here because I've just observed and I haven't judged and I haven't projected and so if there's one thing that I'm going to take out of you know being stuck at home however you want to call it is definitely that ability to to be patient with them and to be to allow them to be humans not just my parents and not expect them to show up as you know god sent ideal parents who you know are here to rescue me every single time so i i think it's all about mindset it's how you approach it. and you know i've had so many of my friends most of my friends in relationships here and or married and we spoke a lot about you know them being in physical lockdown because Europe was so much harder on on the whole, whole COVID thing than Bali was and we spoke about you know them having to both of them work from home in a one-bedroom flat <clears throat> you know how do they manage and then not really leaving the house not seeing anyone else and I surprisingly majority of my friends have come out of it at the other side that they're, they're good they've really enjoyed the time I think it's because they're very independent and lead very independent lives aside from you know from being alone so when they do get time to be together they've actually cherished it and nurture it and see it as like an opportunity to connect but I can imagine it being difficult and that goes back to like triggers right um whatever you see we all <laughs> Brian and I have this saying is what I see in you is what I see in myself um, so whatever part of my French pisses you off and that <laughs> someone well, else is it, probably, <laughs> yeah we are if there's one thing about our friendship is we are very good at pulling each other up on our bullshit so I went on off on a tangent but you get the point <laughs> oh I love it and I think that's it's yeah it's just keeping it real and I think the, this podcast like what we wanted to bring forth in the podcast is really realness and authenticity and you know and I think people can really relate to that because we're all going through the same things and and that really is like the the question that I pose to everyone on the podcast and to for the listeners so they can understand how we you and other people jump back to a state of love joy gratitude and inspiration at any given moment so since being back in, in London and, and, and England, like obviously things are changing, you know, for, for me, I always get a little bit anxious when I have to like change environment and I'm not in my routine because I'm such a routine Capricorn girl. So how have you like, what tools have you taken from potentially Bali or things that you've learned maybe from me, from other people and just in your own life that's helped you navigate a little bit more consciously living with your parents coming back to England being in lockdown like what tools have helped you um by the way everyone's a creature of habit there's no such a thing as humans not being creature of habits people just pretend they're not but they are <laughs> um I think you know there's obviously a big part of work that I've done in terms of discovering a who I am and the pains that I've been carrying and the struggles that have been going on in the back of my head, which has enabled me to be more grounded and 
understand myself better which obviously that in itself allows me to be much more calm and much more aware of my environment but I think I've always been a walker I always walk so like when I lived in London I walked to work every morning for an hour I walked back I on the weekends I would do like 20 kilometer walks around Regent's Park it's just that is my it's like my walking meditation has always been that way um, I'm very lucky to you know when I'm back at my parents house we live in the countryside so I get the most gorgeous um, meadows and walks to walk on so every morning without doubt I'll go on a walk and then if I've had a stressful day I'll do that in the evening my practice my spiritual da daily practice um, I do it five days a week I, I, I allow myself not to do a full spiritual practice on Saturday and Sunday because I'm usually in London um, but that's I see a huge difference in in myself and the output I have towards my work and my creativity when I do stick to it so that's really important to me um, and I think two things that I've learned is not to put a lot of pressure on myself and to talk to actually be vulnerable with my friends because back before I left for Bali I was known for Kinga got it got her shit together if she can't do it I can't do it and I was I never allowed my friends in on actually how much pain maybe I, I was feeling or how much I was struggling and being vulnerable and having those vulnerable conversations um has really allowed me to to just accept what it is and just allow like the I know it sounds you know cliche but the universe to kind of guide me and I am a strong believer is what's meant for you will be and what isn't isn't and you just have to accept that and it's taken me a long time to get to that point to just trust that whatever happens happens for a reason but again it goes back to I had a very vulnerable conversation with my mom last week when I just I broke down and I said how I was feeling about a lot of things that, that are going on at home, about myself at the moment, and just being able to say something that I've had on my mind for the last nine months that I was so afraid to say, it was like a whole weight came off my shoulders. Um, so yeah, I think to summarize, you know, to jump back into my state of joy, gratitude and creativity is definitely the walking, my morning practice, um, and just being vulnerable with my close circle not everyone deserves to hear your story, but people that do, you know, really trust that they will, they will look out for you and they will have your best interest at heart and they're here to help you and guide you along the way as well. Um, so very simple, like nothing crazy. That's just what I do every day. And I, it sounds lame and I'm always scared to say it because there's that shadow self that's like, oh, careful what, what you wish for, because it might, you know, it might not work out. But I, I am definitely the happiest I've been since I can remember. And I don't have a lot, like, in comparisons to... People see my life on Instagram and then they compare my life to, like, when I was living in London and, you know, having this high life and living the life. And they're like, gosh, you're so happy. You're living the life. But honestly, I'm, like, where, where, when, where I was then to where I am now, it's, like, uncomparable. Yeah, you can see in your face, you like it's like this softness that we get. Like I was saying this to John, my partner, who who you're also working with, and we have this like it's almost like we have this internal fight on our face. It's like when we're in that stressed out survival state or the more of the ego state, and then as we start to drop into our parasympathetic nervous system, that like kind of calmness, more of our true self. It's like we start to soften. Our face starts to kind of uh, the you know we have a little bit more softness and I think it's such a beautiful thing uh, with aging but with also wisdom and yeah just becoming more of our true self and I think that's that's why I love you know our friendship because we've really grown together and and you know I've seen you get off balance you've seen me come off balance and we've kind of helped each other come back to together and really that's the whole point of this podcast and the Dharma journey and you know, what we hope to inspire you guys is like, you know, we're always going to get off balance. That's completely life. You know, Ayurveda and, and yoga, the, the, the spiritual practice that I teach and learn and embody myself says that life is always throwing us off balance. And it's up to us to cultivate that self-awareness, to tune in and to understand what throws us off balance. So we can bring ourselves back into balance at any given moment. And, you know, each time we get thrown off balance, when we can get ourselves back into balance a little bit easier. And really that is like 
why we're here is to guide each other home and and give each other tools that have helped us like you know walking is such a simple one but it's so many people especially in bali that don't unless you have a dog a lot of people don't walk they're so lazy on their scooters <laughs> i think what you said there as well it's an important thing to talk about is constant stress and you know when you asked me about quitting my my job in in london and then coming to bali um, and the catalyst as well which i then realized it was the fact that i've been living in chronic stress for the last 26 years of my life constant chronic stress and when i came to you i was so depleted energetically i was living I was living the life in Bali, but I was energetically depleted. Like my digestion wasn't working. I was constantly sluggish. I was eating so healthy, but I, I couldn't digest. I literally constantly slept for like 10, 12 hours. I just didn't, I, it wasn't the king that I knew. I didn't have any energy. And it, if you are living in constant stress for 26 years, it doesn't happen overnight. And I think people have a self like a really false belief that if they go on a free day juice cleanse or if they just cleanse for a week yeah that's a fantastic starting point but you really there's um there comes a moment where you need to get your digestion in order for it to start for your body to start functioning but then what comes is as soon as you're a little bit balanced you really start cleansing and you really start letting go of that emotional weight or the, the emotional baggage that you've been carrying the stress and everything else that comes with it and i think that's probably the biggest transition that you Briar, have seen in me having worked with obviously george um as he coached me and then having worked with you in terms of Ayurveda and the beauty of, of Ayurveda and how we can actually impact my life that combined over the last six months I've gone from being extremely overly stressed holding everything in my body um, to just being and you know eating whatever I want intuitively not because I know is obviously I know when I've had a little bit too much of something but I don't I've stopped emotional eating I suffered from emotional eating for like 17 years of my life Amazing. that's all I can remember and since you know since doing the cleanser cleanses with you and then really working on my emotional side I don't emotionally eat and even when I catch myself wanting to I'm, I laugh at myself and I'm like come on stupid like don't do that um because my body can't take it anymore my body's changed like I yesterday I was so hungry <laughs> I, I was trying to not eat I was trying to basically have a day of not eating because I've, I've gone a little bit over the top on the ice cream and by like four I was like I have to eat I'm too hungry and I just had like two slices of, of food and then my body was full and it's that moment where normally we would just like overeat because we're, we ha we've been deprived of food so we would just like overindulge but it's, if you catch yourself feeling that, you're, you know you're good, you know your body's told you that that's enough and you can stop now. But you can only ever have that feeling and you can only be ever connected with your body is if you are balanced and aligned. So even when you come out of an alignment, you know exactly what it takes to come back and you know what it feels like. So when I come out of my, you know, my alignment or my balance, I hate the way I feel. So I come back to to my routines and to my health habits however you want to call them because I like the way I feel when I do them I don't do it because I'm like oh I have to be healthy or I can't you know I've got weight on it's got nothing to do with the way my body looks it's got nothing to do to do with how people perceive me it's got everything to do with the way I feel when I wake up in the morning and that ties up with what I said with feeling of anxiety when you wake up in the morning that's what I had before I came to London I let go of that in Bali and I wake up every single day without a fail maybe sometimes a little bit tired but I wake up happy and ready for the day and there's no there's no anxiety um and that to me that that tops everything it's the most beautiful feeling and if there's one thing that I've gained over the last year of doing all of this self-work and quitting my corporate job and reinventing myself however you want to call it is the peacefulness of falling asleep and waking up uh ho <laughs> i think a top tip for the listeners is definitely 
I know I tell my clients this is not turning your phone on before you've done like some form of like, you know, breathing, meditation or yoga or something just to check in with yourself, set your goals today, you know, just have a cup of tea, not or a coffee, you know, not check your emails first thing. And I know it's so easy to do. We get into that habit, like I just quickly check my Instagram and then you get into that cycle and then you see something on Instagram or your email and that triggers the anxiety like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do that. So biggest tip I would say is first hour or two of waking up, don't check your phone if you can. I mean, I do it. Do you? I still do it sometimes, yeah. But I think I do it because I, I, I almost have to because my clients are already have already been awake for a day. So I'm like, ah, oh, I just need to make sure there's nothing urgent. But Guilty. Um, yeah, you, I, like, think, <laughs> I think the most important thing is it's catch yourself drifting. It's, it's, it's being aware. It's got nothing to do with you don't need to put all of these stops. You don't need to have a two hour long morning routine like we don't need to put so much pressure on ourselves and do all of these things like people in different lives that have different lifestyles sometimes they can't afford to not check the phone in the morning that's okay but just before you do pick up that phone instead of having a reflex just close your eyes and just take a breath and then do it and then as soon as you have done what you needed to do on that phone and you go to instagram and start scrolling stop just stop and i think that's it's the awareness and that's how you start making those small steps it's got nothing to do with saying don't do it or don't eat it or don't you know don't go out drinking is the is the overstimulation of our nervous system so it's too much food too much drink too much sex too much this too much of everything and too much of a good thing can be too much still and people don't realize that because you are supposed to be like this always and people think that we should be like this and it just doesn't, it doesn't work like that. You can't go, you can't constantly be up or down. You have to have a balance and you have to be comfortable with that balance. So then you can really take pleasure from being up and from being down because you can take pleasure from being down. So it's, it's slowing down and it's been the hardest thing for me. And I know it's hard for you as well, <laughs> but it's just slowing down and taking things a little bit easier. And George always, you know, you're, your boyfriend always says to me he's like just take some like breaks to breathe during the day conscious breathing and it's such a small thing but he taught me you know when you finish one call breathe before you start another one when you go from one meeting just breathe before you enter another room and I have been doing that consciously and it makes a world of a difference so it's not rocket science yeah, I love that. Like, so funny. We we chase these highs and then we have a crash. And I think majority of people, like I know from my own experience, it's like, especially when I was in a job that I wasn't living my dharma, my purpose, I was constantly chasing the next high because I was distracting myself from really feeling and sitting with the discomfort of not being in alignment physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. So it's just the checking in and the more that we can have that self-awareness and cultivate it through certain practices, whatever practice works for you, you know, breathing, meditation, or it could just be walking, you know, whatever you find gets you out of the mind into the body and connected to yourself, to nature. I think that's, yeah, whatever works for you is, is powerful. So yeah, I've, I would love to know where, you know, the, the listeners can, can find you. I know you've, you've got some cool things upcoming, like, you're just starting your creative agency. Obviously you're doing stuff with me and other, other brands, like please share a little bit of your, what's going on. Yay. Um, so I've just started my professional Instagram, <laughs> which is just King of the Let's Go. Um, my website is going to be live on Friday, which is King of the Let's Go.com. And, um, I am in the process also about to launch a uh, branding and creative agency with two of my really good girlfriends called Thirsty Creative. <laughs> um, so that's where I'm at. And also working very closely with Raya all the time, basically her right-hand man um, in terms of the Dharma journey. So I'm sure you will hear more of me hopefully delivering some more wisdom. <laughs> um, so I'm here at the beck and call of that. But yeah. 
really, really open to, to chat. I know that I didn't talk a lot about my work um, because maybe that's not the, the purpose of the, of the podcast right now. But if anyone's ever struggling with, with, you know, making that transition or with the business or not really sure if, if what they're doing is aligned to them, come to Briar, come to me and we will help you out. <laughs> yeah, we're de- well, we're, Kinga and I are definitely going to do some more podcasts and we're going to definitely tune in to more, you know, the business side and how we can create conscious brands and be in alignment with what we love to do. And that's something that I've been learning the last, you know, year and a half. And now I've got you on board and you're helping me with the parts that I'm not so good at. And really that's the beauty of Dharma. It's universal Dharma. And really that's how we grow. We grow so much more when we're in collaboration and teamwork and you know high five sister you know I can't wait to see this journey unfold and for us to yeah to share our wisdom and to listen to other people's and yeah really come back to that most authentic place and be of service to all of you beautiful people listening so yeah lovely to have you on board Kinga and yeah I miss you I can't wait to see you miss you lots miss Suka. I know. I haven't met the new doggo, but does do. to be back in Bali. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and yeah, we'll we'll stay tuned for next week. And thank you so much for being on the Dharma journey. And I'll put your details in the show notes. Um, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>